Hi and welcome to this episode of On Maths Topic Buster. Today we're looking at function notation. We're going to put the fun into function notation. Enjoy! Hi and welcome to On Maths Topic Buster. So we're looking at function notation today. We're going to look at different ways to write functions. So we're used to y equals 3x plus 5. We're going to completely change that. And the reason we're going to completely change that is your exam will. As soon as you start hitting grade 6, grade 7, grade 8, grade 9 questions, they stop using y so much and they start using f of x. The reason they do that is it cuts down the amount of letters they've got to use because they've only got to use one letter Okay, because it's a function of x equals whatever x. So it's just all about x. x doesn't like sharing the limelight with y. We're going to look at composite functions, inverse functions. We're going to do the whole of function notation from start to finish. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to write these equations in function notation. Now, you're not going to be asked to do this in the exam, but it does help us understand what function notation does. Function notation gets rid of y. That's it. So instead of calling it y, we call it the function of x. So we don't have to introduce a new letter. So in function notation, this is the function of x is 2x plus 3. So instead of calling it y and introducing another letter, we just keep it as x. It's that simple. So to find y when x equals 4, the way we write that question is just like this. So we replace the um, x inside the brackets of the function with a 4. Now to find x when y is 4, so we're saying that, uh, that the function spits out 10. Oh, I said 4. It should be 10. So the function gives us 10. And so we would ask, well, what is x for the function to give us 10? Okay, have a go. Okay, so for the first question, we're saying that instead of y, it's the function of x. And this is the function. The second one, um, we're going to just say, right, find, when you put 3 into the function, what comes out of it. So f brackets 3. And this time we're finding out what you need to put into the function to get an answer of minus 4. Okay, so in this question we're given the function, which is 3x plus 2, and we're asked what is uh, what is the answer when we put 4 into that function. So another way of writing this question is y equals 3x plus 2, find y when um, x equals 4. Okay, so... We're putting 4 into the function, so instead of writing x, I'm going to write a 4. So this will be 3 times 4, and then we add 2. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. And that's my answer. This next one, nothing more difficult, I've just put a negative number in it. So it's 3 times negative 2, plus 2. So 3 times negative 2 is minus 6. And minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. Okay, this time it says that the function um, gives us an answer of 17. So um, the function looks like this. I'll just copy that off the top. And we're going to replace the function, the f of x bit with 17. And we're just going to solve that the way we'd always solve it. So put our lines down, not left myself much room. We're going to take away two both sides. And then we're going to divide three both sides. And I'm just going to write the answer over here. So it's x equals 5. And we can check that works. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. OK, have a go. All right, so for this first one, we're putting 4 into the function. So it's going to be 2 times 4, take away 5. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 take away 5 is 3. This time we're putting negative 2 into the function. So that's going to be 2 times negative 2 minus 5. 2 times negative 2 is minus 4. 
and we're going to take away 5, so that would be minus 9. Okay, last one. Uh, I'm going to write the function again, just to be absolutely clear how to do it. Probably waste too much space. So, f of x we're going to replace with 1. And we're going to put our lines in. Hopefully get all the lines all the way down. We're going to add 5 both sides, and we're just going to solve this. So that would be 6 equals 2x, divided by 2 both sides, and then you get x equals 3. Check it works, so 2 times 3 is 6, take away 5 is 1. Okay, so we've understood what f of x means, the function of x, but what if we've got more than one function? Ah, this is where this question comes in. So we have f of x, which is x plus 4, but then we've got another function, which we're going to call, originally, g of x. Okay, And g of x is just 3x, it means we go times x by 3. Now what this enables us to do is do something exciting called composite functions. That just means that we're combining different functions together. So the first one we're going to do is g of f of x. Now, this is like a q. We're British, so we like q's. This f is first, okay? First in line, and then this g, okay? So because the f is first in line, we apply the f function first. So I'm going to leave that g outside, I'm going to put a set of brackets, and we're going to apply that f function. So f of x is just, we're going to get x, and we're going to add 4 to it. And that's it. And now g will have its go. Now, what g is going to do is it's going to get x and it's going to times it by 3. So we've got our, our x. Now our x this time is all of the stuff in the bracket. And we're going to times it by 3. I could expand that to 3x plus 12, but I'm going to leave it as it is. There's no need to expand it. Now you might think that f of g of x is going to give us the same answer. Well, we'll see. This time, the g is first in line, and then the f has to wait its turn. So, we're going to leave the f on the outside. Uh, now, g of x is just 3x. Oh, that's easy. Okay. Now, when we uh, do f of x, we're now going to, instead of x, it's going to be 3x. So, f of x normally is x plus 4, but we're feeding in 3x as x. So, it's going to be 3x plus 4. And you can see that actually it gives us a different answer. The first one was 3x, and I'll write this down, 3x plus 12 when we expanded it. But then f of g of x gives us a completely different answer. And this is common. You very rarely get the same answer. Okay, this last one, g squared of x, well, it just means we're going to do g twice. It's the same as writing this. So we're going to do this g first, then this g. It doesn't matter because g is the same. So we're going to do that g first, which is 3x. And then we're going to times that by 3, which will just give us 9x. OK, have a go. OK, so for this first one, we're doing g of f of x. So f is going to go first. So we're going to leave g on the outside. Sorry, g. We're going to do f first. Now, f is just times x by 5, there we go, 5x, and then we're going to do g, so I'm going to feed in that 5x into uh, function g, so instead of x it's going to be 5x plus 3, and that's it, so f of g of x, so this time f is just going to wait its turn, and g of x is just x plus 3, and then the function of x, the f of x, is going to times it by 5. There we go. Okay, f squared of x, just f of f of x. So that's going to be, I'm going to leave that f on the outside, we're going to do f of x, which is 5x. And then we're going to times it by 5 to do that other function. So it's going to be 25x. Okay, so we're asked to find f to the power of minus 1 bracket x. 
basically this is called the inverse function it's just the opposite function so if f of x uh, for the first question is 3x what's the opposite of that and there's a really really easy way of doing this step one is just replace f of x for y it's just easier that way now step two this is a weird step is you swap over the x and the y so swap x and y and all you need to do is you need to get it so that it's y equals so to our lines and so what am I going to do both sides well I'm going to divide by 3 both sides to get rid of the 3 by the what from the y so it's x over 3 or a third x equals y or y equals x over 3 now we introduced y Okay, there's no y in the question, so we get rid of y and replace it back for f of x. Done. So the inverse function, whoops, and I've written f of x, but obviously it's the inverse function, so it's the inverse function of x equals x over 3. So step 1, replace f of x for y. Step 2, swap the x and the y's around. And step 3, make it y equals and then finally just replace y for uh, the inverse function so f to the power of minus one and that's it so let's do that for the second question so i'm going to write the function as y equals 2x plus 4 then i'm going to swap the x and y around so x equals 2y plus 4 put my lines in and you probably need a little bit longer and we're going to take away 4 both sides. So it's x minus 4 equals 2y. And we're going to divide by 2 both sides. So x minus 4 over 2, let's extend these lines a little bit, equals y. Or y equals x minus 4 over 2. And then finally, we're just going to get rid of the y. And we're going to replace it with the inverse function of x equals x minus 4 over 2. Okay, final one. Uh, and let's just get us some room. So I'm just going to reserve this bit here. There should be enough space. So we're going to write y equals x plus 1 over 4. We're going to swap the x and the y around. And then I'm going to put my lines in. I'm going to times both sides by 4. First of all, so it's 4x equals y plus 1. And then we're going to take away 1 both sides, which is, uh, oops, just going to be 4x minus 1 equals y, or y equals 4x minus 1. And then we'll get rid of the y and replace it for the inverse function of x. So that's my solution there. Okay, have a go. Okay, so first one, we could just write y equals 10x. And we'll swap the y and the x around. So x equals 10y. Put our lines in quickly. Divide both sides by 10. And we've got x over 10 or 10th x equals y. And then we're just going to say the function of x, or inverse function of x, is x over 10. Done. Next one, we're going to say y equals 6x minus 2. Then we're going to swap them around. I'm going to do it on the right-hand side. So I'm going to swap the x and the y's around, which is quite tricky. But there we go. And then I'm going to put my lines in. I always do my lines way too short. I'm going to add to both sides, first of all. So x plus 2 equals 6y. I'm going to divide by 6 both sides. So it's x plus 2 over 6 equals y. And then our answer will be the inverse function of x equals x plus 2 over 6. OK, last one. Uh, it's a slightly harder one this time, but we can cope, hopefully. So we're going to start with y equals 5 over x plus 2. I'm going to swap them around. Okay, this time uh, we get a little bit more complicated because obviously the y uh, is at the bottom of the fraction. 
So whenever we're in this situation, what you can do is actually just swap these two around. So effectively, we're timesing by brackets y plus 2, and then we're dividing by x both sides. So I can actually write that as y plus 2 equals 5 over x, and that's absolutely fine. Then we need to take away 2 both sides to get y equals. So y equals 5 over x take away 2. Or the inverse function, because remember we can't use y in our answer because we put y in. y is not in the question. So inverse function of x equals 5 over x take away 2. OK, have a go at these harder questions. OK, so for this first question, it's saying that we want to double the function of x and then we want to add 3 to it. So we just literally write out 2 times the function of x, which is 5x plus 1, and then plus 3. So we write out the question again. But instead of f of x, we put the function in brackets. So let's expand that. And then obviously it would be 10x plus 5. Wicked. OK, let's move on. Put a line. OK, this time we've got the inverse function of x and then the function of x. So we're going to do the function of x first. So we're going to put x through the function. We're going to times it by 5, then add 1. And then the inverse function will then take away 1 and divide it by 5. So if you did the work now, brilliant. But whenever you have a function and then you do the inverse, you'll always just end up with x. So if I put, uh, I don't know, 10 into the function, so 5 times 10, 50 plus 1, 51, and then I put it into the inverse function, which takes away 1, first of all, 50, and then divides by 5, 10, I'll always get out what I put in. Okay, so the answer to this is just x. And this is a way you can check that your inverse function is correct. What you can do is put a number into the function, and then whatever it, you get out of it, put it into your inverse function, and you should end up with the original number. So if you've got some time left in the exam, you can use that to check your answer. Okay, this last one's a little bit more complicated. So we know that we're going to do the f first, and then the g. So let's do the f of x first. So let's leave g on the outside. So it's 5x plus 1. Okay, now G says we're going to square whatever we put in and then plus 4. Now we're going to put in 5x plus 1. So we're going to square 5x plus 1, okay, because that's our new x. And then we're going to add 4. So we're going to expand this. So don't forget that whenever you expand a squared bracket, you just write the bracket twice. OK, now I'm going to do this quickly. So 5 times 5, 25x squared. Then we've got 5 plus 5, because it's 5 times 1, 5 times 1, which would be 10x. And then 1 times 1, which is 1. And then it doesn't ask us to factorise it. I don't know whether this would factorise. So that's going to be my answer. Thank you very much for watching this Topic Busters. If you enjoyed this one and want to see more, please look at our YouTube account. Just type in On Maths on YouTube and we come up. Uh, otherwise, go to the website onmaths.com and you can uh, have a go at all of our predictions, Topic Busters, Demon Questions, Mini Mocks and countless other things. Thank you very much.